What if I told you that a woman in one swift coup seized the Russian throne, altering the course of history forever? This isn't a tale from a fantasy novel, but a true story from the annals of 18th century Russia. The woman in question is none other than Catherine the Great, a name that resonates with power, resilience and transformation. Born as a minor German princess, her destiny was seemingly mundane until she set foot on Russian soil. The political landscape of Russia was a swirling vortex of power struggles and precarious alliances, a far cry from the structured courts of her German homeland. But it's within this chaos that Catherine saw her opportunity, a chance to seize the reins of power. This video will delve into the audacious coup against Peter III that catapulted Catherine to the Russian throne. So, how did Catherine, a minor German princess, pull off one of the most audacious political coups in history? Catherine's journey to power began when she arrived in Russia as a young German princess. Born Sophia Augusta Frederica, she adopted the Russian Orthodox faith and the name Catherine upon her marriage to Peter III, the Grand Duke of Russia. Her early life in Russia was far from a fairy tale. Catherine was thrown into a world of political intrigue and power plays, far removed from her relatively simple upbringing in Germany. The Russian court was a simmering cauldron of dissatisfaction and tension, with many nobles and military officials growing increasingly discontented with Peter III's policies and erratic behavior. Peter, known for his fascination with all things Prussian, was often seen as more of a German prince than a Russian Tsar. His decision to abruptly end the Seven Years' War with Prussia, a conflict that Russia was on the verge of winning, was seen as a betrayal by many in the Russian military. This act alone led to significant disenchantment among the nobility and military ranks alike, further weakening Peter's already shaky hold on power. Catherine, on the other hand, quickly adapted to her new surroundings. She learned to speak Russian fluently, embraced the Orthodox faith, and cultivated relationships with key figures at court. Despite the trials of her marriage to Peter, a union that was more a political arrangement than a love match, Catherine remained resilient. She bore the trials and tribulations of court life with grace and determination, earning the respect of many in the Russian court. It was not just Catherine's adaptability that set her apart, but also her intellect and political acumen. She was a voracious reader, consuming books on history, politics and philosophy. Catherine was a woman of the Enlightenment, a believer in progress and the power of reason. Her progressive ideas, coupled with her understanding of the Russian court's dynamics, put her in a unique position to challenge Peter's authority. It was in these turbulent times that Catherine saw an opportunity to seize power. As the political tide turned against Peter, Catherine's moment was on the horizon. The stage was set for one of the most daring power grabs in history, a coup that would forever change the course of Russian history. Catherine did not just stumble upon the throne, she meticulously planned her ascent. This is where the plot thickens. Catherine, a German princess by birth, was fully aware of the power dynamics at the Russian court. She knew that to ascend to the throne, she needed the backing of Russia's influential figures. So she began forming strategic alliances with those who could aid her in her pursuit. The Orloff brothers, for example, were a pivotal part of her plan. These four brothers were influential in the Russian military, and their support would be instrumental in securing her path to the throne. Catherine's charismatic personality and diplomatic prowess proved invaluable. She was not just a pawn in the political game, but a player in her own right. She showed her mettle by winning over the Orloff brothers, not with empty promises, but with her vision for Russia's future. Her charisma was infectious and her strategic acumen was undeniable. But the Orloff brothers were not her only allies. Catherine also cultivated relationships with influential guards regiments. These were the men who held the power to protect or overthrow the monarchy, and their loyalty was crucial. Catherine understood this and used her charm and wit to secure their support. She was shrewd, calculating, and incredibly persuasive. She knew which strings to pull, which alliances to form, and how to win people over. Catherine was not just playing the game, she was rewriting the rules. The alliances she formed were not just about power, 
They were about securing a future for Russia, a future she envisioned. A future where Russia was not just a pawn in the game of European politics, but a player. A future where Russia was not just surviving, but thriving. With her alliances in place, Catherine was ready to make her move. The stage was set, the pieces were in place. The Game of Thrones was about to take a dramatic turn, and Catherine was ready to make her mark on history. The Day of Reckoning arrived on July 9, 1762. This was the day that would change the course of Russian history forever. From the break of dawn, the air was thick with anticipation and uncertainty. Catherine had spent the previous night with the Russian regiments, who had pledged their allegiance to her. As the morning sun rose, she emerged resolute and undeterred, dressed in a soldier's uniform. With her heart full of ambition and her mind set on the throne, she rode to the Semenovsky Barracks, one of the most prominent military establishments in Russia. Here, she was proclaimed the sovereign ruler of Russia, her proclamation echoing through the stone corridors and out into the crisp morning air. The soldiers, their faces stoic yet eyes filled with determination, pledged their loyalty to Catherine. They were ready to follow her into this daring, unprecedented coup. Meanwhile, Peter III, oblivious to the storm brewing, was away at Oranienbaum, his summer residence. He received the shocking news of his wife's audacious rebellion and the betrayal of his regiments. It was a blow that left him reeling, but he had little time to recover or plan a counterattack. Catherine, with her newfound power and the support of the Russian regiments, wasted no time. She sent her loyal followers to arrest Peter III. The deposed emperor, taken aback by the swift turn of events, offered no resistance. He was captured without a fight, his reign abruptly ended by the woman who once stood by his side as his wife. The coup was a masterstroke of strategic planning and execution. In less than a day, Catherine had managed to dismantle the existing power structure, seize control, and establish herself as the ruler of Russia. It was a testament to her cunning, her courage, and her unyielding ambition. In less than 24 hours, Catherine had successfully overthrown her husband and seized the Russian throne. Catherine's coup was just the beginning of a transformative reign. Indeed, the swift and audacious coup of 1762 was not merely a power grab, it was the opening act of a reign that would leave an indelible mark on the annals of Russian history. Let's delve into the key policies implemented by Catherine during her reign. One of the first things she did was to embark on a series of reforms aimed at modernizing Russia, a task in which she was greatly aided by the stability her successful coup had ensured. She initiated a massive overhaul of the administration, dividing Russia into 50 provinces, each administered by officials appointed by her. This allowed her to centralize power and exert greater control over the vast Russian lands. Education was another area Catherine was deeply interested in. She established the Smolny Institute for Noble Girls, the first state-funded higher education institution for women in Europe. Her educational reforms extended to all social classes, with a focus on practical skills and moral education. But perhaps Catherine's most significant policy was her expansionist strategy. She believed that for Russia to be a great power, it needed to expand its territories, the coup had given her the authority to pursue this ambition. Under her reign, Russia expanded southwards and westwards, annexing Crimea and partitioning Poland. Now, let's consider the implications of the coup on Russian history and Catherine's legacy. The coup had a profound impact on the political landscape of Russia. It firmly established the principle of autocracy, setting a precedent for future Russian rulers. More importantly, Catherine's coup, by placing a woman on the Russian throne, challenge the traditional gender norms of the time. As for Catherine's legacy, it is as complex as the woman herself. On one hand, her reign is seen as a golden age of the Russian Empire, a time of modernization, expansion, and cultural flourishing. On the other hand, Catherine's policies often favored the nobility at the expense of the serfs, leading to an increase in social inequality. So what can we take away from Catherine's reign and the impact of the coup? It's a story of audacity and ambition, of a woman who seized power in a man's world and used it to transform an entire nation. It's a tale of paradoxes, of progress and inequality, of enlightenment and autocracy. Catherine once said, 
I am one of the people who loves the why of things. She didn't just ask why, she dared to change the why, to shape it according to her vision, and in doing so, she changed the course of Russian history. Thus, in a swift coup, Catherine reshaped the course of Russian history, marking the beginning of her transformative reign as empress. Her story, like Russia itself, is vast, complex, and endlessly fascinating. It's a story that continues to captivate us, centuries after her death.